Oh hey, welcome to Rad Lab. I have a new project that I want to try. I've been watching a YouTube channel called The Lockpicking Lawyer, and basically he can lockpick any lock ever. So one of the things I wanted to do is to make a lock and then send it to him and just kind of see how it does. So I can do a little bit of machining and I was just gonna make like a super simple press fit lock and send it to him and see if he can figure it out, which he probably can because he can pick like any lock ever. But I just thought it'd be kind of an interesting lock to send to him. So yeah, let's just get started. So here are the materials for the project. I have material for the lock body and the shackle. And then these are materials for to make the bending jig for the lock shackle. And this is the ream I'm gonna use to make two super precise holes in the lock body. My plan was to make a super simple lock. So the lock body would be made out of a block of aluminum with two holes drilled and reamed. You would heat up the lock body and then the holes would expand and then you could slide in the lock shackle. And then as the lock body cooled, it would tighten down on the shackle. This is kind of a variation of the press fit or a heat shrink fit. So I had a certain size reamer available in the shop. So I need to turn down the legs of the shackle so that they'll work with the reamer that I have. So I put the stock in the lathe and turned down the OD. For added security, I wanted to add some security bolts. So I drilled and tapped the ends of the shackle legs with a quarter 20 tap. After I tapped it, I tested the screws and they worked perfect. So the piece of material that I ordered for the shackle is straight, but a shackle, as you know, is in the shape of a U. So I need to make like a jig so I can bend the straight piece of material into a U, but I need to do it in a very controlled way. So to do that, I'm gonna make a little jig and then I'm gonna use a hydraulic press to form the shackle into a U. So these pieces of steel right here, I'm gonna use as the side plates. So here I put both of them in the vise at the same time and I match drill them. Match drilling is a really cool technique to make sure that the parts come out identical. So I'm just stacking them right on top of one another and drilling them at the same time. That way the holes align perfectly. Next, I made a couple of rollers for the side plates on the lathe. So the way that this is gonna work is the shackle is gonna sit on these two rollers right here. And I need to put a U-bend in this middle part right here. So pretend that this small wire is the shackle and I'm gonna put this little puck right here and I'm gonna push it down with a hydraulic press and it's gonna form the U-bend into the shackle. This is what it looks like when it's all bolted together and the wheels still spin freely and the puck goes on top with the hydraulic press pressing down in the middle. Forming the shackle actually went pretty smoothly. I thought the shackle material would be would resist a lot more, but the hydraulic press is quite a bit of force, so it, it made pretty short work of the shackle. I used a torch to kind of heat the shackle up a little bit to prevent any cracking on the outside radius of the bend. And it worked great. There was no cracking or any surface imperfections on the outside of the bend. After it came out of the press, you can see that there's a really nice even bend on that shackle. It came out really good. There was quite a bit of spring back, so I ended up putting it in the jig sideways and just using a piece of material to bend the shackle legs until they were parallel. The press ended up getting me only so far, and so I kind of transferred over to the vise. Fine tuning the legs so that they were perfectly parallel took a super long time. You can see me checking the shackle with calipers, and I was able to get the legs of the shackle to within one thousandth of an inch of parallelism. And so I finally got that done, and the reason I wanted to do the shackle first is because I needed to know the distance between centers on the shackle leg. And the reason for that is the distance between the holes needs to be super precise for the heat shrink fits to be able to work properly. Okay, back to the lock. The original reamer that I had didn't really work, so I ordered a larger one that was one thou bigger. And as you can see, the fit didn't work out very well. It was too loose. Okay, so I tried that other reamer, the 0.415, and it cut it a little bit too big. So I got a, a 0.4145 reamer. So it's a half a thou smaller. So I'm gonna just drill some practice holes in this lock. This one's, this lock body is just toast because I can't add material back into it. I could take it off, but I can't add it back on. So I'm just gonna drill some practice holes in this and then try it in there and then see if it works. And if it works, I'll cut out a new lock body and then we'll put that in the vise and ream those holes out too. So let's get to it. To be able to test the lock, it basically involved heating the lock body with the blowtorch until it became maybe two to 400 degrees. And with the blowtorch, it takes about maybe like 30 or so seconds. And then I would take the shackle and insert it in. And that heat makes the lock body grow a little bit, imperceptibly small. But again, the diameter of the holes are in the half thou to one thousandth range. That's also imperceptibly small. So 
that's how this lock is still able to work is just because of these super small, super tight fits. I was able to get it in while the block was hot and now the block has cooled off and it is stuck. I was curious what the pullout strength of the shackle was and so I put a crane scale on there and the little forklift that I was using didn't have very fine of a control so it kind of pulled it out kind of fast but I would guess the holding force is between 150 to 200 pounds which is probably about right for the light press fit that the shackle has but that's enough of a hold that you can't really pull it out by hand. So armed with this new information, I machined out a new lock body. So as we check out past Shane machining the new lock body, I have some cool news for you guys. I've gotten some questions about some projects I've done in the past and how to make them. So I decided to make a website to share project files and other cool stuff. So if you're curious about a project or just want to support the channel, feel free to head on over and check it out. Okay, cool. Back to the lock. Carefully measured out the holes and then drilled and reamed them just like before. But with the reamer size, that worked really well. And it seemed to work really well. As I was testing in a new lock body, I realized that the lock body was so hot and it was really hard to work with. I realized that a slide hammer would make putting it together and taking it apart a lot easier because sometimes you need to give it some love taps to put it together and take it apart anyway. So a slide hammer was a perfect solution. So I used a large half 13 bolt as a slide and then I just machined some pieces of stainless steel for the hammer. And being that it was a lock, I decided to put a security pin in the threaded hole to make sure that you just couldn't put any old half 13 bolt to take it apart. So to make room for that security pin, I drilled out the end of the bolt so it can fit past it. I didn't like the look of the bolt head so I machined it off and welded on a custom machine head to make holding it a little bit more comfortable. And at this point the lock was looking pretty good but it just needed that little something extra. So I decided to machine the Rad Lab logo into the surface of the lock on my CNC router. So I traced the Rad Lab logo on Fusion 360, made a couple tool paths and threw it into the router. A couple minutes later, the lock was sporting the Rad Lab logo. A quick sanding job kind of polished it up and it was pretty much ready to go. And to kind of recap, to use the lock, you have to first heat up the body. And this is a lot easier with a slide hammer because you can just hold the slide hammer while you heat it and you heat the block so it's a couple hundred degrees hotter and then you can slide it onto the shackle. And this is a lot easier now because the handle has a built-in slide hammer and so you can give it a couple of love taps to make sure it sets correctly. And once the lock body is set correctly onto the shackle, you just unthread the handle and you just wait for the lock to cool off. I love the slide hammer handle because you don't even have to touch that super hot lock. It makes it so much easier to work with. After you put the lock body on, you use these security screws and these screws are really cool. They're a quarter 20 thread, so they're a really common thread, but these are available only from one supplier in the whole world. So that makes getting the security bit used to tighten and loosen them super hard to get. So it's not a common security bit at all. It's a proprietary drive only made by one company. I threw that in there kind of as a curveball to see how the lock picking lawyer handles it. I'm sure he'll get past it in like 0.2 seconds, but I just thought it would be kind of funny to throw at him. And you put them through the lock into the shackle for some extra security. And then you just wait for the whole thing to cool down. To take the lock back apart, you just do the opposite. So you take the screws out first, heat up the lock body until it gets really hot, screw in the slide hammer handle, and then while pulling and using the slide hammer, you just knock the lock body back off. And that's all there is to it. Kind of a convoluted lock to use, but a really cool use of tight machining tolerances and scientific principles. So in my book, it's a total win. Cool, that's pretty much about it. I'll uh, wrap this up, we'll send it to the lock picking lawyer and we'll see what he does. Well, obviously he's gonna lock pick it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does it. Anyways, thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you guys later, bye.